This is Tony Chimmel, and I'd like to introduce the hosts of the Game Marks Podcast, George Feast and Johnny Clash. to the Game Marks Podcast, where each and every week we take a deep dive into the good, the bad, and the awesome of all video games. I'm the man they call Johnny Clash. And I am George Feast, and today we are continuing our playthrough of the Tony Hawk series, where we dive into Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4. We also discuss our proudest high score moments and a whole lot more. And please subscribe and leave a five-star review for this podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and follow us on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. And don't forget, you can get this very episode early and ad-free at patreon.com slash pod exchange, along with the show notes, Discord access, where we have a whole lot of fun live recordings, which I have to send out the link right now because I forgot, giveaways, and a whole lot more from us and our friends going postal and state of affairs. And oh my goodness, we have so much fun with those guys, let me tell you. Oh boy. Uh, I wish that there was a way that we could do a video game show in the style of state of affairs just because it. I feel like it lends itself to so many topics of debate that I feel like if we found a way to debate that, like maybe we do, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we've done revenge we versus definitely figure something out to do. Maybe early PlayStation games versus early N64 wrestling games do that way. Well, why don't we talk with shoes and swaggle and see what we could come up with? I think we I think we could come up with something. We could yeah. come up with something, but Hey, John, Hey, happy anniversary, buddy. Dude, five years. This very episode, our five-year anniversary. And get this, it's literally coming out on our five-year anniversary. It's nuts, man. Five, the, I can't believe it's been five years that we've been doing this show. The day after my wife's birthday, five years ago, we started. I had my little microphone that was this big. It was itty-bitty, the size of an Samson AirPod case. Mic. I went and bought this the next week because it sucked so bad. I remember sitting on my bed in the apartment with a laptop and a whole bunch of handwritten notes laying around me as we did WCW World Tour. We didn't even really know each other. No. Like, Hi, we're the Gaming Marks, and welcome to the Game Marks Podcast. It was horrible, but we certainly found our way quickly. Five years in, we are. <laughs> this is, as I look at the notes, episode 259, which is crazy. Yeah, there's been some best ofs and reruns here and there and we don't count those so it does appear to be more but full yeah. on episodes almost 260 of them that's pretty crazy yeah man i uh like you said we did not really know each other aside from uh some some twitter interactions and maybe one <laughs> one conversation in real life i think uh but Smart man. marks birthday parties every yeah, year yeah i i talk to you now Every day, multiple times a day for, for the past for the past five years, we do this podcast. We, we have Pod Exchange and all the shows that we do with that. It's uh, we've we've grown a long way. We've we've recorded uh, wrestling uh, promo videos of you we've training real me to wrestling be a wrestling commentary with, together. Yeah, like, I stood in a wrestling ring with you at <laughs> with a pay per view. A couple of them couple of I, I was i was your manager at one of them it's insane this has been so much fun and we're gonna keep the party going like we said starting sip the first week of september we're gonna go to bi-weekly we're gonna do every other week which gives us more time to do more content give you guys even more fun stuff on youtube yeah. we're gonna really boost that youtube we're gonna make it just a party in there so yeah you so might not september be getting a second episode will be the first episode where we go bi-weekly yeah a little kickoff so we're gonna make it a party over on youtube we're gonna keep doing what we're doing and it's gonna be a good time so but speaking of is. speaking of keeping keep doing what we're doing here we are in the middle of doing a breakdown of a series 
our first series breakdown. Hopefully you guys are having as much fun with this as we are. We're doing Tony Hawk Pro Skater. We did one and two last week. I, I This is usually the part where we talk about what we rated them, but we both know we love these games. They were so much fun uh, then. They're more fun now because we have a better appreciation. And I feel like this is the game that a lot of or this series even, maybe the game series that most people are so nostalgic about is just, it's like this Super Mario, like there's, you know, generations of people out there that identify with this game. Yeah, a lot of good reactions to this episode. A lot of people asking why we didn't cover 2X and the remakes, because to us, those are separate episodes. Those will be separate games that we will play at a later time. You can't compare 2X to 2. You can't compare the remakes. They're completely different engines. They're completely remade. But what we will do is keep going with the series. Yep. We're not going to go simultaneously like we just did with these two. We're going to break it up a bit. We're going to go back to wrestling next week. Don't you worry. We are still covering every wrestling game that has ever existed, unfortunately. But we will come back to the Tony Hawk series eventually. But I'm very excited to see what we're going to do in a couple weeks and kind of get this going again off the ground with some non-wrestling games. Yeah, so we'll be diving back into this series with Underground and Underground 2. That'll be uh, after next week's episode. And then, um, yeah, this is going to be the new format. We'll do a series breakdown. We'll throw in a wrestling game. We'll do a series breakdown. We'll throw in a wrestling game. I was talking to John about a series that I want to break. Uh, that I want to break down with a with a friend of ours who we've always wanted to do an episode with, but really haven't had the opportunity. But there was one game series that we know this guy loves and uh, had many conversations with him about it. So excited to announce that when the time comes. That'll be probably within like a month or two, hopefully, if schedules can align. But yeah, I gotta ask them, which I did do. So <laughs> no, it's fine. Listen, there's nothing. We got nothing but time, John. Nothing but time. But hey, are you ready? to put on those nostalgia goggles, tiptoe to that diving board and do a big old cannonball right into Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4. I see what you did there with the cannonball. Let's do it. Go. Looking to add the newest wrestling figures to your lineup? There's no better spot to pick up your next figure than the Wrestling Collector Shop. Started by collectors for collectors around the globe, Wrestling Collector Shop has been serving the fans the latest and greatest in wrestling action figures since 2002. So the next time you're looking for the newest wrestling collectible to add to your collection, make sure to go to WrestlingCollectorShop.com and use code GAMEMARKS to save yourself 10% on your order. That's 10% off your order with code GAMEMARKS at WrestlingCollectorShop.com. Alright, as always, the deep dive is brought to you by our friends over at Wrestling Collector Shop. Make sure to use code GAMEMARKS to save yourself 10% over at WrestlingCollectorShop.com. Now, each and every week, courtesy of Wrestling Collector Shop, we give away a action figure, a wrestling figure. Last week, well, it was like the last two weeks, you had the opportunity mm -hmm. to win a Rhea Ripley and a Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Now... That has been drawn, and now, courtesy of Wrestling Collector Shop, you can win. What, John? All right, I don't have it with me. It's not here, but it is on its way. You can win. And Mattel Elite Collection Series 109. Damien Priest, courtesy of Wrestling Collector Shop. Great figure, and I can't wait for someone to win it. And we have another whole slew of really good figures coming over the next few weeks that you could win. So we'll be on the lookout for that. Hell yes. Again, thank you to our friends over at Wrestling Collector Shop. But, John, let's get into it. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 released October 30th of 2001. Tony Hawk Pro Skater Damn. 4, October 23rd, 2002. So almost the full calendar year. Wow. Man, oh, man. These games are out on a lot of different consoles. Uh, you want to do what we did last week? We could split it up. You want to take Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 or 4? I'll take 3. You've right. got this game for the PlayStation, the PlayStation 2, Game Boy Color, the GameCube, Xbox, Game Boy Advance, Windows, Nintendo 64. 
end mac o s now both of these games developed by neversoft published by activision before you get into what consoles tony hawk 4 is on i want to say that tony hawk 3 was the final official release for the n64 if you ask yeah. me i wouldn't even say that this came out for the n64 but Apparently it did, but it was discontinued three months prior. So this was the last Oof. game and uh, it was released for PlayStation 2 supporting online play and was the launch title for GameCube. Man, along that's... with uh, remember the commercial along with WrestleMania 18. Oh, yeah. With the wave bird wireless controller. <laughs> I got to tell you, I we've talked about it on this podcast. For those of you who maybe didn't join us for all of the wrestling episodes, we are both on record saying that the Dreamcast and the GameCube may be some of the most underrated consoles. Uh, I think and the, the GameCube is my favorite console of all time. It is just such a cool design. Uh, is he is he pulling out? Oh, I thought I was gonna, to... but there's too much stuff in front of it. Uh, were you about to pull out the controller or the whole console? Oh, the whole thing. Oh my god, the lunchbox right console. So right great. Behind me. I, I love it. The that iconic oh, and they made, startup screen is fantastic. Like, and they uh, made the screen that went on top of it so you could just bring just the console. Such oh. a an innovative console that so I good. felt was so ahead of its time, much like the Dreamcast. But yeah. If you didn't know that, we are big uh GameCube and Dreamcast fans on this podcast. Uh let's go back to Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4, the consoles that that was released on. Uh you got the PlayStation, the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, the GameCube, the Game Boy Advance, Windows, Mac OS, and the Tap Wave Zodiac, which okay. Can't say I'm <laughs> super familiar with that, John. I'm not familiar with this at all, but I have the link here. It's a mobile console made by Motorola, I think. Or at least it's on the Motorola CPU. So I don't really know. I think it says operating system was Palm. So is that like Palm Pilot? Yeah. So it's a Palm. Uh, it uh, Yeah, it has the Palm OS. It was developed or it has the Motorola chip in it. It had Madden 2005. <laughs> Duke Nukem. So Tapway what is, is its thing? own company that was founded by former palm executives oh and look at that interesting the psp and the ds pretty much killed it rightfully so i mean it looks very similar it's not bad looking but yeah no, it's, it's got old controls in a new environment so i see why it didn't really last but uh, i always like finding these little consoles we didn't know about very interesting. Uh, we still have to figure out how we're going to play games from the Wonder Swan or the eventually. Mobage. Oh, 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 and Mobage, the, yes. The internet thing. Yeah, so, so let's, let's talk get about this. these games, man. So, what I think is one of the coolest things about Tony Hawk 3, and then I'm going to share a little story. This game had advertising for the first time from actual companies like Downhill Jam. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> Taco Bell, Nokia, Jeep. Taco Bell being obviously my favorite one. And then on the other side, you have Tony Hawk 4, which just pretty much builds on Tony Hawk 3. So everything you're getting that we're going to talk about a little bit in the gameplay, you're getting on 4 as well. All of the combos are there. All of the tricks are there. There's now new stuff. There's a better way to kind of navigate, like the turning system's a little better. The career mode has completely changed, and you're going to see that as we go into like the later games, like Undergrounds and all that, this is kind of oh, yeah. where it starts. And this is also where you could kind of see what Skate takes their games from. Full cut scenes. Yeah. You know, it, it, it just, you know, this is going to be something that we, we feel like we're going to start saying a lot more. It, you kind of see that same trajectory with the wrestling games. As the technology and the hardware of the consoles get better, you have the freedom to do more. You can have backstage segments. Mm -hmm. You can have full-blown cutscenes, uh, you know, backstage on the entrance ramp, uh, in the ring. It, it allows you to have so much more freedom. And this is a shining example of that where you can see the advancement from Pro Skater 1 to 2, then to 3 to 4. And I honestly... I can't wait to get into Underground. I know that you and I have talked off the podcast that we have a lot of memories of playing that one because it's like a – you're. I feel like when Underground and Underground 2 came out, you're in like different stages. Like you're in like a different stage of your life. Like you play one and two, mm -hmm. maybe three as like a kid and then by four, five, you're a little older. You're, you're a little, maybe, maybe you're skating a little bit more yourself. 
Yeah, uh, I played them on the, un- both undergrounds, I think, on the GameCube. So it's way different than where I was at for one and oh, two yeah. and three and four, which is when I wanted to bring up Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 available on the <laughs> Xbox. I was an Xbox kid, so I got Tony Hawk 3 for the Xbox. It was like a whole new world was just unlocked because now you're getting the game you love, but it looks and plays that much better. But here's the thing. I asked for it for Christmas, obviously. But Mm -hmm. I think for some reason, it was October. So did I really wait? Maybe I bought it on my own for Xbox, which is possible. But I also had it on the PlayStation 1. And I think maybe that's where the Christmas gift came in, like after the fact. So I barely ever played it. Honestly, it might be right behind me. I could check when it's your turn to talk. (laughs) But... (laughs) I remember thinking like this is so much worse than the Xbox version because you had to wait for things to like render. You saw we just played this version for us. Like you have that kind of like black abyss in front of you that yeah, you get it <laughs> slowly like, uh, shows up with pieces of the map. It's like rendering fog. Like it's just yeah, like you got that wasn't there on Xbox. Oh man! But, but now the... Tony Hawk Four, I think, also I had for the Xbox. This one specifically, I never heard the soundtrack because I had WWF Forcible Entry loaded into my Xbox and I set it's it to be played. the soundtrack of Tony Hawk and I just never went back and changed it. So all I would hear was like, dun, 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 the game, just as we do, every time I would load it up and it would just run through that album on repeat, on repeat. Uh, sidebar so, story really quick. Did you Did you find that sometimes you would either have songs loaded up on your console and then they would just start playing in games that you wouldn't expect. Like obviously probably with, <laughs> with Tony Hawk, you, you set that to be the soundtrack, but did you ever have it where all of a sudden you're like, why don't I just keep hearing the same couple of songs? Every time I play this game, you're like, Oh, it's the soundtrack from this album that's loaded onto the console. That's doing that. I'm sure that happened probably with like fusion frenzy or something. <laughs> I did that with my I look quick. In my PC one time, I had, I think I was playing Doom or like original Doom or original Quake. And there was a setting that was like automatically turned on. If you were running that program, any audio CD would play in the background just as like at a low volume in the background. And I had Green Day's warning. I know you're not a big Green Day guy, but I had Green Day's warning not at all <laughs> in, uh, in the CD drive. And it just played constantly in the background and i was just like why do why do i keep hearing this group like warning and all these green day songs and then one day i'm like where is my green day cd like i was looking for it and i opened up the disc drive and there it was i was like this explains a lot this explains yep. why for like the last week i've been listening to the same four songs mm-hmm. all right sorry about looked. that random tangent but hey we both had them story time i just looked i don't have all my playstation games here so it has to be at my <sighs> parents house but i'm sure it's there. And Soup's in the chat saying Green Day is better than the Red Hot Chili Peppers and I'm about to ban him for life. So anyway, <laughs> let's get let's into the game Let's break down the game modes. modes here, man. So as always, we talked about it earlier. You've got your career mode, which over the course of the lifespan of the Tony Hawk games just gets built on and built on. It gets more and more uh, inventive. It doesn't even need necessarily the cut screen or the, the cut scenes. It's still, you know, collect skate. Find the hidden tapes. Uh, do trick attacks hit certain points? Uh, you know, score certain points on certain ramps. Make certain gaps. It's all of those things. But as they progress throughout the game series, you're getting the, a little more meat on the bone uh, in terms of what the career mode is. Obviously, single session is just your regular. You pick a map, skate through a regular time session. It's a one-off map from career mode. Free skate, self-explanatory free skate. Uh, Two-player mode, same modes for the most part between one, two, and three. Trick attack, um, horse, tag, and graffiti, I believe, are the ones that uh, that make the appearance the whole way. I think in four, you get a little bit more if you're playing with the network adapter uh, online. Yeah, there's and some then, new game modes as well. And then you have creative skater and park editor as well. But now when you get to four, this is where... Now, you're no longer doing 
the career mode you're used to. You're not collecting the tapes. You're not collecting whatever. This is now you're going to you're going to talk to Jamie Thomas in the street. You're going to go talk to Lisa Steamer in the street. And they're going to give you stuff to do. It's pretty cool. Also, you're going to free skate around. This is where I said this is where skate gets from. This is where I feel games pigeonhole themselves because Tony Hawk's building off Tony Hawk. Where skate is looking at it as a whole saying we could do this. And we could do this, but better and make it our own. Not saying skate's necessarily better. Obviously, it's a more realistic game and it has it's, it's its own thing. But I yeah. think I don't think there was ever competition there. I think if you like Tony Hawk, you're getting probably both because you're a skate fan in general. Yeah. Um not the skate cat, the series, skate in in the sense of the genre of game. Yeah. Um uh, the money system's back where now cash icons are all over the map. You can grab them. You can grab cash. Now you could buy clothes. You could buy cheat codes. You could buy videos. Now, remember the cheat codes, like low gravity mode and all that? Oh, yeah. You could just straight up buy perfect, it. Uh, perfect perfect balance. Tricks. Yeah, all of that's just in the game, and it's just pretty cool. But now George was saying there's some new two-player modes. Also, there's now network play available yeah. in Tony Hawk 4, which was pretty cool. I don't think Unreal. I ever did it, to be honest. Because I was probably scared of just getting my ass whooped. But you have Trick Attack Graffiti, Combo Mambo, which is almost the same as Trick Attack, except the highest number of points are done in one combo. Um, King of the Hill, which you capture a flag, and you must hold, the, but it's a crown. You have to hold it for as long as possible before getting railed over and someone steals it, kind of like Fortnite. There's Slap, where the goal of the game is to hit each other. The fastest skater will knock down the other. And then, of course, your free skate, where you just practice and everybody just skates around. How's a good time? I'm trying to remember. Do you remember in our Discord, there is a Tony Hawk Pro Skater uh, like fan-made hack that was online? And it's all levels, but it's on the Underground Engine. Yeah, I do remember that. I don't I know where remember to get it called. from, but I'm sure we could find it. I can't remember what it's called because I wanted to talk about it because that's like what... That's the... some next level shit right there. Oh my god, it's insane because I'm pretty sure it's on the Underground or Underground 2 platform, but it's all levels from the first one to Underground 2. And I think it's got some anagram like... Like it's like... Yeah, I can't remember what it is, but <laughs> yeah, we'll find it. Uh, but let's talk about something that is probably the most iconic or most synonymous with the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games. The soundtracks, obviously, a lot of soundtrack, a lot of songs on each game. We're not going to run through all of them. No way. But, but man, looking at these, there are I some bands featured on the soundtrack. For Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3 and 4 and 1 and 2, to be honest with you, that I was listening to the bands today. Like, Oh, of course. It, it's Since our last episode, I've listened to uh, Superman by Goldfinger probably every day. Oh, yeah. Did you, have you heard the uh, Here in Your Bedroom uh, re, redo that they did with Avril Lavigne? No, but I will because that's two things I like. That's uh, They did that's a, a, uh, that new Post Malone country song. They redid that with less than jake which is pretty cool oh that's cool yeah or that's... what is it post malone and like blake shelton or something i don't know i'm not a country guy but they did pretty good uh or is it post malone and um if you said a name i'd probably be like uh-huh did, <laughs> did he do the song with jelly roll no that's mgk great song ah i was like i know great someone song. did a song with with jelly I roll. had some help featuring post malone featuring morgan wallen whoever that may be oh okay but mm -hmm. I mean, Post Malone would be a great fit for a Tony Hawk game, gotta say. Oh God, that'd be, that'd be fantastic. But I'm looking at this soundtrack here, AFI, Alien Ant Farm, CKY. That's just like all the good stuff. I remember Motorhead Ace of Spades playing over and over again. Oh, Blitz yeah. Blitz Creek, Bop. I mean, look at that. Soups, Red Hot Chili Peppers is in there. Rollins Band. <laughs> you got Exhibit, Zebrahead. Zebrahead. So cool. I was a big Zebrahead fan. I would say returning from the world of wrestling. Well, no, this is this is first. The they, song they do. Anthem, my old band used to cover that song by Zebrahead because we okay. had like a singer and a rapper. <laughs> Don't okay. <Google> it. <laughs> but let's talk about the four soundtrack because this one kind of goes back to like the roots of one and two. AC with like, DC. Yeah, some of the olds thrown in there, but you got Flogging Molly. Like, come on. 
this oh i just love these soundtracks and the best part bouncing souls i remember i booked them at a college show once i got to like meet them and hang out with them oh that's cool and you the have... best part you could just go on spotify and someone has already put together this playlist oh, and you oh, could just listen to it a hundred percent now i will say for tony hawk pro skater 4 depending on what console you played it on i do believe there were exclusive songs or exclusive tracks uh oh, yeah. could be yeah that, i don't know that you in the uh let's let's open up that that then a lot of exclusive oh and asterisk the notice a song that was available for the playstation one version that's what okay okay all right so i guess playstation one only had a limited soundtrack uh so best. the the rosters for both are very very similar uh do we just name the differences here or you want to just do a good old roster read for both games um i mean looking at them i think the only difference is that bob burnquist is in four but for some reason he's not in three and i feel like i know why like i remember hearing why but i can't we'll have to look it up and get back to you on why but we could do the unlockables here oh yeah the unlockables were <laughs> well we, I, we should read the roster <laughs> anyway yeah so we'll do one one <laughs> roster read the roster for tony hawk's uh pro skater three and four uh you have tony hawk bam margera kareem campbell room gil clifford bucky lasik chad muska andrew reynolds jeff rowley eric costin Alyssa steamer jamie thomas steve caballero rodney mullen and then like John said, Bob Burnquist is in four, but not three. And then your exclusives for Tony Pro, Pro Skater 3. John, what are they? You got Darth Maul, Wolverine, Officer Dick, Private Carrera, Ollie the Magic Bum, who I believe I've played as a lot, <laughs> Kelly Slater, Demoness, the Neversoft Eyeball, which was awesome, Amazing. Doom Guy, who is for the PC only, X-Ray, who is unlockable for the Xbox only, Sean Palmer, only for the Game Boy Advance version, which sucks for him because he's just like a little half-inch blob probably with a lot of hair. Um, and then Mindy, I don't know who that is, for the Game Boy Advance only as well. And then but, for yeah. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4, your exclusive, you've got Eddie, Django Fett, Mike Vallely, Daisy, Little, little Person is a PSX unlockable mindy is also uh for the game boy advance fry cook for the game boy advance roger and momo also for the game boy advance so when it said just eddie i was like wait a minute is that from iron maiden and i looked it up it is eddie from iron maiden, iron maiden. the mascot okay. of iron maiden yeah i don't know Django fett that was pretty cool no i also don't remember Django fett huh. Huh. now i said this in our playthrough i think I don't know if it made it in, but TK Wild, friend of the show, sent me today that Chad Muska was hanging out with Bam Margera. He's like, look who I'm with. And it was kind of just like, oh, like it just felt good. Like they both, I hate saying it, they both looked healthy. <laughs> like uh, we've seen Bam go up and down, up and down. And he seems pretty up right now. That's and good. Chad Muska, he was just always kind of like a rebel. But then I think it was the Tony Hawk pretending I'm Superman documentary, he didn't look too great. Age caught up with him, but both guys look well, and I'm, that makes me happy. Yeah. Skateboarding's kind of making a little comeback, I feel. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I feel like it's just it's one of those things where it never really went away. It's just not getting the mainstream coverage that it was, uh, you know, in the 90s and 2000s. But... Here you know, we go. We got works. our answer. Oh. Soups researched it for us. That's why we have him on the field. It says Bob Burnquist wasn't in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 because he was in ESPN X Games skateboarding. Oh. Exclusive contracts suck. There we go. Now we have the answer. I don't think I ever played that. I'm looking it up no. now. I remember seeing the cover. That's for sure. I think at one point we want to do just like a one-off random extreme games uh, episode. Yeah. So we'll cover like... The Razor Scooter in there. Yeah. Razor Scooter. Kelly Slater. 2-3 two, two, Extreme. Uh, 1080 Snowboarding. Shit. We have to do an entire episode on SSX, don't we? We do. There's, I'm there's excited like... for Cool Borders. Ah, oh, Cool Borders is good. Was Cool Ooh. Borders... <sighs> that wasn't the same developer no 
No. No, I think it's... Idle Minds. Mm. Yeah, there's... Yeah. I put together a list. Uh, so much fun. I put together a list of game series that we can break down. It it grew very it's... quickly. It grew very, very quickly. We, we might be doing this this style for a long time now. I, I'm cool with that. I'm, I'm down. Uh, Let's talk about right. what the games actually have here that are different from 1 and 2. Tony Hawk 3, so the introduction of now you could revert, which was cool. A trick that kind of add some combos in there with some manuals and whatnot, which I used extes- extensively. And you could see it in our playthrough as well. You could do just way more combos with it. You could grind almost forever if you could keep your balance. There were also hitting combos. There was now grabs, lips, and grind tricks that you could perform into the next one and double tapping where you could do like a double pop shove it, a double kick flip, double heel flip. I was laying that on George during trick attack like crazy. Oh, man. And um, the PlayStation and N64 versions do run on the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 engine. There's just kind of a different reverb animation than the other games are going to get, which you could expect because, well, it's not as good. (laughs) Now, Tony Hawk 4, like we said earlier, it's just built on 3, so you're getting all of that stuff. But now the combos from the previous game make an appearance, new tricks. They're all just now in there. You can now better navigate the skate parks by, I guess... Tony Hawk 2, I feel like especially, was really bad at this. If you wanted to, say, collect like the letters or the tape and you wanted to get to a certain area, it was really hard to get to that area by doing those wide turns. Now you could stop, you could yeah. pivot, you kind of do like a little U-turn. It was a lot easier. Um, new to this game is now the spine transfer in which the player can press the shoulder buttons to transfer between quarter pipes connected back-to-back yep. otherwise. I love this because that was one of the things i think in the previous games you had to press like up, up and it yep. would go to the other one this made it so much they easier added a button to just to keep it, doing yeah game literally game changing it made doing stuff so much easier and then john the last thing that they added my favorite part of this game i did it so much Gitching, which you <sighs> now hang off the back of a moving vehicle wouldn't you have loved to have that in two when that little golf cart was going around uh, oh. the school knocking you down with the officer on it it just and we talked about it earlier. It's one of the things that you can do in the early skate games as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always I don't know. There's something, there's something fun when you can use that as a, a method to gain momentum and launch yourself off of a, yeah. a ramp. That is for sure. Let's take a break, and then let's come back and let's talk about the levels. Oh, so good. <laughs> back haven't heard that in a while but okay let's talk about the levels here there's actually tony hawk 3 has a lot of console exclusives here you have foundry canada rio which was my personal favorite suburbia the airport skater island oh my god skater island not included in the game boy advanced version i have to look that up i that just rang a bell um los angeles and tokyo so you're getting more realistic places in tony hawk 3 and that's gonna continue over to tony hawk 4 now on xbox ps2 gamecube and pc you're getting the cruise ship also a cool level the warehouse burnside and roswell xbox gets the oil rig playstation 1 and x64 get downhill which is also based in rio game boy advance gets the zone and game boy color was canceled canceled for all other platforms get paris which i think was an older map that does sound familiar tony hawk 4 you're getting college san francisco alcatraz which was cool kona skate park shipyard london the zoo in london the carnival and chicago illinois which is originally from matt hoffman's pro bmx2 now the carnival and chicago are exclusive to the ps2 gamecube and xbox and windows version San Francisco level is absence from the Game Boy Advance version, and the PlayStation 1 does not feature the zoo level, but includes the sewer and Little Big World. Man. Yeah. There is there is just an iconic level, or there is at least one iconic level, I think, in every single Tony Hawk Pro Skater game. Like, every game has that one level. You're just like, oh, man, I love this. I played this one for uh-huh. hours. Like... Well, Rio was, last week I said how we used to play Master of the Game. Yeah. Pretty much what it came down to with the score was Rio ha- was shaped like a ring. So on the outside, it was an infinite grind to manual. 
So you could just keep going forever and ever. the timer would be gone for like three minutes and we're still going. But then you do that one extra kickflip and it either makes it or breaks it. Well, that's what we did today in our playthrough. We, we certainly did. One extra kickflip. That ah, all right. Let's killer. break down these iconic covers here. Every Tony Hawk Pro Skater game features some form or variation of this very, very notable logo. I mean, the man is on the cover. Who else are you going to put on the cover of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater? Lisa Steamer. Except for Tony Hawk. <laughs> and all the uh, the other skaters are mentioned in one way or another. You've got their, their names on there. Uh, but very similar uh, style covers. Uh, Fisheye photograph of Tony Hawk on a ramp, half pipe doing a trick. You know? It's been a fun photo shoot. Oh, yeah. Now, what really got me was the sounds once you enter into the game. So the art style here, we're going to go over. If you played it on the PlayStation or whatever, it really just does look like two. It's There's not much difference. But the sounds are the same for the menu, which really gets you, of course, with that new soundtrack that we talked about. I loved the menu of three, how you're in that skate shop and each thing oh, yeah. you select takes you to somewhere else. They always nailed it out of the park with these. Two was the skate, like the wheel that went around. Three was the skate park. Four is kind of like you're on like a half pipe and it goes through the scenery of the game. It, as you that progress. is the one that feels the most, like that sets you up to know the kind of game that you're going to be in like mm -hmm. the Very, menu like, modern looking feels yeah. open world and the game is more open world yeah and you're getting pretty much i mean it's hard to describe because we're so used to wrestling games but when you're talking about the graphics everything here looks great obviously four better than three they did change up the special bar for three it's a lot bigger it takes up a lot more space oh god it's... we both said we didn't like it during the playthrough but it kind of went back to normal in four where it's a little bit smaller it's up tucked in the top left and of course the moves are still on the bottom in the same fashion they've always been in it's pretty nice pretty yeah, nice i, I must say no no notes uh the, oh. the game ages very very gracefully you know if Here's you something. go in and three was the one to introduce the meter on the grind that tells you your balance. That's true. You used to just have to look at your character and just hope for the best. <laughs> judge judge how they were leaning. But now you're getting um, an actual meter. Just but great. yeah, the, these are these are games that age very well. They you know if you go in expecting uh, 2024 graphics, you're going to be disappointed. But the gameplay ages. Very well. The graphics for, you know, if you take into consideration the years that they're from, they're not ter terrible. They're not the best, but for what they are, they get the job done. There's not a ton of, um, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. There, there's not a ton that ruins the immersive experience once you've played, you know, uh, a level or two. If you are new to this series, you could play the first one and have a, a good time just knowing that you're being set up to play a, a very memorable series that you can watch progress and get better graphically as the, the hardware changes. Yeah. And just like I mentioned, the PlayStation one and two versions, well, really mostly the PlayStation one version of these games was a little brutal with the rendering and all that. But as you get on to like the Xbox and the PlayStation two and Oh, the GameCube, it's just smoother, it's cleaner. Nice game. Yeah. Like I yeah. said, they age very, very nicely. They age very, very nicely. Did you know? Did you know the Xbox version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 has an improved frame rate over the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube versions? Did you know? GameSpot declared the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4 is the second best Game Boy Advance game of November behind Metroid Fusion. Did you know Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 was the first game in the series to feature animals? While most of them acted as pedestrians, some of them could be used to sketch on. For example, the hippo would cause a hippo plant, the lion would eat the skater, and the elephant was sketched. Wow. I remember that. Running the, the lions would get you, the hippo you could plant on. Interactive environments, man. Interactive environments. George, it is hot as hell in this room. 
I'm going to turn this fan towards me a little bit. I want you to do the same. I don't think yours is on because it makes too much noise. Ask Swaggle, he'll get pissed at you. It's time for some R&R. It's time for some ratings and reviews. Let's go. All right, we're going to start with Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. I'm just going to give you the heavy hitters here. Metacritic starts at an 87 for the PlayStation, works its way all the way up for the 97 on the PlayStation 2. Now, for comparison, Xbox only gets a 93. GameCube gets a 91. Eurogamer with an 8 out of 10, but the Game Boy Advance gets a 9 out of 10. Game Revolution with a 9 out of 10 stars. Game Spot. Wow. Pretty much everything gets a 9 out of 10, I would say. PlayStation 2, a 10 out of 10. Xbox and Game Boy Advance come really close with like 9.6. N64 with an 8.1, rightfully so, I guess. That's limited. And IGN hovers around the 9.5 area overall. They did not rate the N64 version. And by July 2006, the PlayStation 2 version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 had sold 2.1 million copies and earned 77 million in the United States alone. Now, on the other end, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, not as good. You're getting a 94 on the PS2. GameCube gets a 91. Xbox with a 90. Game Boy Advance with an 85. And the PC with an 88. Eurogamer gives it an 8 out of 10. GameSpot with an 8.7 for the PC. Works its all the way up to the PS2 with a 9.5. And then everything else in between. GameSpy gives it well, pretty much. Oh, my goodness. Five out of five stars for the PS2 and the Xbox, and a four and a half out of five stars for the GameCube and the PC. IGN gives it a 92, pretty much across the board. Nintendo Life with an eight out of 10 stars. Nintendo World Report gives it a nine out of 10 for the GameCube and an 8.5 for the Game Boy Advance. And the official PlayStation Magazine gives it an eight out of 10 for the PS1. That's you know pretty what's damn weird? good for a PS1 game. You know what's weird? Uh, so last week, when we talked about Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, Famitsu rated Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 and gave it a 28 out of 40. <laughs> I think I said fuck Famitsu. <laughs> yeah. Not, uh, not present here. No, but on the opposite end of that, IGN said Tony Hawk 4 is by far the best skateboarding title around and head and shoulders are above its Me Too competition. Damn, suck it, X Games. <laughs> Shit, man. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But we said last week we were going to wait for this week to give an overall rating. George, right now, it's not only late, it's time to rate the game. Look at that. The game! John, I don't... This yeah this is more like a conversation i think yeah I, let's talk about why tony hawk pro skater uh one through four is such an influential series and why we both love it so much so for those of you who are not familiar uh you're just joining us for the first time on this series we either give games a play it forever <laughs> which is a good thing, and we like that because it's a game that we want to play forever, or it gets a future endeavor. <laughs> which is a pun on uh, things that happen in the world of wrestling. When someone gets released, they get future endeavored. Uh, and that's a bad thing. So <laughs> Great obviously, <explanation. laughs> obviously, John and I love and have gone on record multiple times saying that we love the original four Tony Hawk Pro Skater games. And we're obviously going to give them a play it forever. But let's talk about why, John. Where where does this sit and what what has stood the test of time for you about this series? Well, you saw, everyone saw, how giddy I got talking about this, talking about the soundtracks. Tony Hawk 2... One of my all-time favorite games. It's in, I would say, the top five, not even the top ten. Maybe even the top three. When you think about the old games, like I think No Mercy, I think Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, I think Halo, I think Gears of War, all of that. I would put Tony Hawk 2 there. I would put then put three, and then one, and then four. Four comes in last for me because I feel like I played it the least. I still put a ton of time into it, but probably the least amount 
but also one was kind of also on the bottom there. Overall, each one of these games gets to play it forever easily. Oh, absolutely. You ranked which one? Number one? Two. Yeah, I'm, I'm going two, right three, one, four. Yeah, I'm, I, I stand right next to you in that ranking, uh, both within playability and just overall time spent in the games, much like you. Played a lot of all four of them. Just two was the one that I played the most, both by myself, with my friends, with my cousins and other family members, who some of which had no interest or knowledge of skateboarding. <laughs> And those mm-hmm. are always the the most interesting. I don't know if you had uh, a similar experience, but playing a skateboarding game with someone who is not someone who typically plays a skateboarding game was always such an interesting experience. So many questions. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, it was fun though. Everyone loved it. It just it was a universal language at the time. Oh yeah, much like I don't know what can you say now. Call of Duty, like no matter who you are, what you like, you're getting coming back I, to a game like that. I don't know. I would even say Mario Kart. Or that, yeah. Game that stood the test of time has come through so many different generations of consoles. And whether you're a massive fan of the series or someone who's maybe only played the last one or two releases, not a hard learning curve, easy to master. Um, oh, I'm sorry. What's the saying? What? <laughs> easy to play, easy to play, challenging to master. Sure, like, we'll go with that. If you want to, if you want to learn all the crazy uh, tricks and skips in every level, you can definitely make the game more challenging. But yeah, I think I think that is comparatively something another series that has stood the time through many generations. And hey, you know what, John? It's getting added to the list. We're gonna break down Mario Kart games too. <laughs> Let's freaking go. We could compare it with uh, Crash Bandicoot, Crash Team Racing. There you go. As Easy we did comparison. on OMG on our Patreon. Not as many uh, Crash Team Racing games. No. But man, this was great. This was so much fun. I can't wait to do Underground. We'll probably skip five in American Wasteland and all those. But <laughs> we have to skip uh, mainly because I don't think that either one of us should or want to play this. But I don't think that we'll be able to do Rye just no because it's motion controlled. And uh, from what I understand, we the, don't have a way to play it. The well, no, not even that. The board itself was not very responsive uh, in its controls and broke easily so are they on ebay I'm sure they are 40 bucks only eight bucks with the game <laughs> oh well, that's crazy maybe we'll try it uh all right guys let us know what you think of the first four tony hawk pro skater games anywhere on the internet you can find us at game marks pod write it on your zanga there you go john with that <laughs> Are you ready to get into this week's soft lock question? Your soft what? <sighs> the soft lock <laughs> question is a segment on the podcast where. One of our mega marks from our Patreon gives us a topic to debate, a question to answer. It's a question of the week with a fancy Usually a real name. hard question. <laughs> Fucking giggles in the background over there. I can't get it. Jesus Christ. Oh, the soft lock is brought to you by our friends over at Dubby. Make sure to use code GAMEMARKSPOD over at Dubby.gg to save yourself 10% on jitterless energy. That, hey, you know what? Tastes pretty great, too. This week, the question. <laughs> I didn't say anything. I looked over at your camera at the wrong, <laughs> wrong possible <laughs> second. Just the, just the. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a, pog- I'm a Poggers guy now. Oh All right. my god! Anyway. Well, change the ad. <laughs> I'm I'm Ron Burgundy. I'll read whatever's on the teleprompter. Uh... <laughs> Love you, Dubby. The soft lock question this week comes from. <laughs> the reigning, defending, oh. Game Berry champion, Mr. Sean Tecker himself. Tecker's question is, what is your most proudest high score in any game? Ooh. I've mentioned yes. mine many times. And I brought it up recently with the person who I was with, actually. Um, I went to Dave & Buster's in the city for a friend's birthday years ago. 
Okay. I actually brought that up. She had no recollection of that ever even happening, but I was like, no, it was your birthday. Um, Guitar Hero. The used, <sighs> pretty handsome, awkward. I went on expert and I nailed the high score. Ooh. Nailed it. And I don't know after I left if how long it ever stayed, if it was ever unplugged and plugged back in. But I know I took the high score and pretty handsome awkward by the used at Dave and Buster's in New York City. Ooh, that's a good one. I do believe that uh, there was a a car racing uh, game that was in one of the arcades. I can't remember if it was Fast and Furious or if it was uh, – there was an initial D one. It was one of the ones that you had like you know your memory card, like your card that mm-hmm. was all your information. And I sat down. I played a couple, uh, a couple of races. A friend of mine went. And then when I sat back down, I ended up setting like – like I had like a perfect run on mm. one of the the maps and I got to be number one on the leaderboard and it was there for months. Yeah, and, I don't think I ever had another moment like that. So that's <laughs> And then the arcade closed. So oh, I don't know. You should have bought the whole cabinet. That machine got unplugged, everything got reset, and uh yeah, that was my fifteen minutes of uh fame there. We're out there somewhere, our names. Yeah, Probably somewhere. Just <laughs> yeah, it's your it's your score and my lap time. Seven but it's years just ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was a good one. Let us know I, if you remember any of your uh, high scores on any games. I mean, it could even be console games. Yeah. Memorable Soup says I was ranked 49th on Pantera's song on Rock Band Blitz. That's about it. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thanks for your input. <laughs> I don't even know what Rock Band Blitz is, to be honest. But that will be a fun series to cover one day. Because you. Oh can, yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Are you ready to know what we are playing next week on the show? Let me know, man. All right. We are within that one year mark, <gasps> which means it's time to play a newer game. Oh, baby. We talked to these guys. We interviewed them. Oh. We hyped for this game. It's been out a year. It's going strong. We are playing Wrestle Quest. Yes, that's what I was hoping you were going to say. Yep, I love oh, when the game hits that one year mark and it's ready to go. So oh, this here we is, go. We're gonna break oh, that. man, if you haven't listened to the interview, go and find it in the archives and prepare yourself for Wrestle Quest next week. The last two weeks have been really fun playing Tony Hawk Pro Skater, but we are going back to what John and I do best: breaking down wrestling video games. I'm very excited to do it with. Wrestle Quest next week, as always. That was with James Deegan on, I'm trying to get the exact date, June 26th of 2023. Oh, so if right. you want to check it out, it's on YouTube. It's everywhere. All right. Hell yeah. As always, guys, you can check out all of our video content over at YouTube.com slash Game Marks Podcast. GameMarksPod.com slash shop for all of our merchandise. If you would like to buy a shirt, you can head over to ProWrestlingTees.com slash GameMarksPod. Or if you're in the market for some shirts from this podcast, for State of Affairs, for Going Postal, or just Pod Exchange overall, you can head over to PodExchange.shop. That is P-O-D-X-C-H-A-N-G-E dot s h o P, sweatpants, hats, hoodies, beanies, starter style jackets, you name it, it is there. Patreon.com slash pod exchange for this show. Early and ad free access to show notes and exclusive content from all of the shows that I just mentioned before. This show, State of Affairs, Going Postal, and some collab stuff that we have planned with all three shows coming up pretty soon. I cannot wait for that. About that. At Game Marks Pod on all forms of social media. And as always, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. And if you could and you wanted to help out the podcast, you can leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts and, and Spotify. Win a figure. And you could win a figure while doing it. 
And if you have a product or service that you'd like to advertise on this podcast, you can reach out to us at gamemarkspod at gmail.com. John, very happy to be closing the chapter on Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 through 4. Excited to dive back in real soon whenever you're ready. Do that thing. Game over. Marks. Game Marks Podcast, put them on the radar. Playing rare games, second Saturday, no game shard. Johnny and George work hard and they play hard. Future and never games and put them in the graveyard. From the deep dive to the clash at the feast. How can I get more? That's question of the week. Follow on Twitch, there's nothing that they won't play. Game Marks Podcast every single Monday.